Jim Kelly led his team to the Super Bowl. He wanted his son to do the same. I was already in the backyard showing how to grip the football. He never got the chance. Your son is gone. A story of death. No, no, God, no. And a story of life. And he did this through a little boy who suffered and never spoke a word. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. As I told you some time ago on this program, I think oil is going to hit $300 a barrel before it's finished. It may take a while, but it's hit $105, still climbing, and it's over, uh, well, that fighting in Libya apparently uh, is a threatening oil supplies, but all over the Middle East, there's chaos. But there may be possible some good <clears throat> news. We should actually have new sources of oil soon. And guess what? From right here in America. In fact, Mark Martin has the story. North Dakota's prairies and badlands have a peaceful beauty. But for many, what lies underneath this landscape is the real draw, or real play, as they say in the oil industry. There's uh, a tremendous amount of oil in the Bakken. North Dakota, its neighbor Montana, and a part of Canada are home to what's known as the Bakken Formation, a massive area covering about 200,000 square miles. The United States Geological Survey estimates the American portion holds 3 to 4.3 billion barrels of undiscovered, technically recoverable oil. Unlike conventional wells where the oil collects in a certain area, the oil in the Bakken is spread throughout shale rock, primarily over a large area. These were here before, but our knowledge of them is not what it is now. The technology was not here before to develop these. It most definitely is here now. Production in the Bakken jumped 50% in just the past year. Here's the main hole where they're drilling for the oil. This drill pipe here goes two miles down into the ground and then two miles over to extract the oil. It's a technique known as horizontal drilling. Drilling down, then out. The horizontal drilling is opening up vast fields of oil once locked away in rock. That's helping to reverse a two-decade decline in the domestic production of crude. Companies are investing billions of dollars to drill for oil in North Dakota, Colorado, Texas, and California. Oil executives and analysts say in just four years, the new fields could yield as much as two million barrels of oil a day, more than the entire Gulf of Mexico produces now. And for North Dakota, that's great news for the state's economy. What's happening here is so different than what's happening in the rest of the nation. I mean, we have rising property values. We have low unemployment. Unemployment in North Dakota has dropped to the lowest level in the nation, 3.8 percent. That's far less than half the national rate. Right now the state has a budget surplus and a lot of it's due to the oil uh, activity in western North Dakota. At a time when states face massive budget deficits, the shale oil boom has handed North Dakota a one billion dollar budget surplus and the hope is that increasing our domestic supply of oil will benefit the entire nation by bringing gas prices down and reducing our dependence on foreign oil. Our appetite for energy is so big that it takes a lot of pieces to meet that need. But it's a step in the right direction. Sure, sure. If it's developed and all of the environmental concerns are addressed. Environmentalists are concerned that fluids or wastewater from the hydraulic fracturing, a process used to remove the oil from the shale, could pollute drinking water. The Environmental Protection Agency is investigating. But those concerns aside, the big oil fields here could help the U.S. cut its dependence on foreign sources by as much as half within 10 years. Mark Martin, CBN News, Dickinson, North Dakota. Thanks, Mark. It's a very good piece. What they do down there, they <clears throat> drill a, a vertical well, maybe five, 6,000 feet in the ground, and then they go horizontal for maybe, uh, oh, a mile or so, and uh, that's another 5,000 feet or so, and then they, they uh, have what they call fracking. They, they take uh, water under great pressure and huge amounts of sand. I mean, one frack would maybe take a million two hundred thousand pounds of sand and um, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, and they blast the rocks open, and then the stuff starts coming out uh, to, to come back to the surface. Um, there, there's something called the Hainesville down in uh, Louisiana. There's the Eagle Ford in Texas. 
Um, there's the Marcellus Shale up in, uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, New York. Uh, there are other shales out in the, in the West Coast. We probably are the Saudi Arabia of shale, especially with gas. We have more natural gas. And as I said yesterday, the time has come for the people in Washington and others in our leadership to start switching over to natural gas. A British thermal unit of natural gas is now cheaper than a British thermal unit of coal. And it certainly is a lot cheaper than a British thermal unit of, of uh, oil. So gas has been running at less than $4 um, uh, a million and <clears throat> cubic feet, and, and uh, it, the price is coming up. But that's the answer if we just begin to uh, retrofit our trucks, buses, to run on natural gas, it will save an enormous amount of energy, and it will be a very good thing for our country. But we've got plenty of it if the environmentalists don't screw it up. I, I, I know we've got to protect the environment, but, oh. Hey, you know, you're with the, have you ever been in the wilderness? In the wilderness? No. No, I've been like a little bit in the forest. You know, they, <laughs> they, they, they want to protect the wilderness, but yeah. you know what the wilderness is? I was out in, uh, Oh, I don't know where I was in Wyoming, probably. And uh, we were riding horses. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, you want to go see a wilderness? OK. Yeah. So uh, we, we, it's all rocky and messy and mm -hmm. scrub pine and everything. So we went, and this sign says you're now entering a wilderness. So it was still rocks and shale and scrub pine. And yeah. No different from what we've seen yeah. before, except somebody called it a wilderness. And we said, we've got to protect the wilderness. Well, why? I mean, it's the same as, as everything else. Mm -hmm. And a few oil, oil wells are not going to disturb the wilderness. But we need to get real with this. So we're going to be paying $6 and $7 and $8 and $9, $10 a gallon for gasoline. And it won't be pleasant. It'll hurt our economy. So we should have a crash program to start getting the, the gas and the oil out of these shales. And of course, the, the private industry is doing it as fast as they can. They're drilling wheels going all over Texas, all over Louisiana, all over Pennsylvania, all over North Dakota. But my hat's off to North Dakota. It's now the best managed state in America with a billion dollar budget surplus. So you North Dakota people, you're sitting fat and happy and I'm glad for you. Well, Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories in the CBN newsroom, Lee. Pat, the Obama administration is ready now to hand over control of military operations in Libya. The president says that could happen within a few days. But there are questions about who will take that control and who will pay for it. It could be NATO. But one security expert tells The Washington Times that NATO is in complete disarray over Libya. Here at home, Obama is facing ongoing criticism from Republicans and Democrats for his handling of the Libya action. Some say he should not have gone to war in the first place, and others say he took too long and hasn't handled it well. Pat? Well, what we've got to do is call the Italians and put them in charge of this operation, and then we'll really see it screwed up. So as if we're not doing bad enough as it is, <clears throat> Obama doesn't want to lead. He doesn't want America to lead. He doesn't think America is anything different from any other country. We're an exceptional nation. We're the shining city on a hill. We're, we're the, the hope of the world. And we're also the most powerful nation on earth, and we, it's our job to, to lead. But he doesn't want to lead. He wants to go behind some multinational organization. He waited too long to get in on this deal. I'm not sure he should have done it at all now. It's, it's, it's going to be a mess. And now they're arguing about who's going to pay the bill, because ultimately they're going to pass the check to you to pay it. Lee? Radiation fears in Japan are at a new high. The workers trying to stabilize a leaking nuclear plant in Fukushima were forced to evacuate again today because of rising black smoke. Officials hope to restore power to the plant's cooling pumps. Radiation levels in Tokyo's tap water are reported to be more than twice what is considered safe for infants. Radiation has also seeped into the vegetables and raw milk in Japan. That's why U.S. officials announced a block on Japanese dairy and produce exports. The earthquake is emerging as the world's most expensive natural disaster. A new government estimate places the cost at around $309 billion. Republicans are criticizing the Obama administration for its budget proposals. A new estimate from the Congressional Budget Office says that the White House has underestimated future deficits by more than $2 trillion over 10 years. 
The report also finds that the president's budget increases this year's deficit by $26 billion. Congressional Republicans say the report shows that the president is not serious about cutting spending. Pat? You know, Lee, I, I just say it, it's like a, a bus is going over a precipice into a abyss. And people are on the side of the road saying, slow it down, stop it, turn the, turn the wheel. And the people on the bus are saying, well, don't talk to us about what to do. We know how to do it. And they're madly going for disaster. This country is going over a cliff economically. And, you know, you, you feel like, you know, Paul Revere, the British are coming. You, you just scream out a warning. And these people are ignoring it. <clears throat> and amazingly, the Democrats in, in Congress are saying, well, the Republican uh, 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 proposals are draconian. Uh, they're not realistic. Uh, they're painful. They, they ignore the poor. They're, they're doing this on the backs of the poor and all this stuff. This country is going broke. And ladies and gentlemen, they're not even giving us honest figures to deal with because the figures they give us are understating the problem, and the problem is enormous. It's going to affect your children, your grandchildren, the life every but one of us lives in this great nation. It's a, it's a problem. But so far, Congress doesn't want to fix it. Lee? Pat, one of the Republicans who wants to replace President Barack Obama in the White House is businessman Herman Cain. He's usually not mentioned on the list of GOP candidates, but David Brody reports that could change. If you attend a Tea Party rally, don't be surprised to see the Herminator. The American dream is under attack. Kane is not a career politician. He's a Tea Party member, a Baptist preacher, and the former CEO of Godfather's Pizza. He calls himself the common sense candidate and tells CBN News Americans are fed up. They are sick and tired of being sick and tired of the same old stuff, which is nothing ever gets solved. Matt, will you please help me welcome Herman Kane? Kane spends a lot of time in Iowa, the first stop in the 2012 presidential race. He's preaching a fiscal conservative message of repealing Obamacare, returning to the gold standard, and restructuring entitlement programs. One of his themes, emphasizing our country's Judeo-Christian heritage. They don't like it when the president omits endowed by their creator from reciting the Declaration of Independence. You believe that was intentional by the president? I believe it was an intentional because he did it three times. Now, with all of his teleprompters, how could you not put that in there? No, I believe it was intentional. His message is starting to resonate. He won a recent Tea Party straw poll, and redstate.com, which is a major conservative website, declared him the winner of their reader poll. I hadn't really heard uh, Mr. Kane speak before, and I was quite impressed with, with his credentials. Political strategist Ralph Reed believes Kane can gain traction, especially if Mike Huckabee and Sarah Palin do not get in the race. If neither runs, I think you could look for a Herman Kane, um, a Rick Santorum, um, and maybe other candidates to really break off right tackle. Cain has overcome bigger hurdles. God has done some magnificent things with my life. Five years ago, he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And I only had a 30% chance of survival. God said, Herman, not yet. And he saw signs of God's involvement along the way from the name of his doctor. His name is Dr. Lord. I said, what? L-O-R-D? Yes. To the nurse named Grace who served him at the hospital. A lady named Grace. My wife and I looked at each other and I said, thank you, Lord. He's with me on this journey. And the surgeon was a Christian from Lebanon and told Cain how he would remove all of the cancer with just one incision. I'm going to start in your sternum and I'm going to make an incision in the shape of a J. As in J-E-S-U-S, -S, he said, yes, a Jesus cut. And so Kane is still here, and the rest of the GOP field is about to encounter the Herminator. And these candidates are going to have to deal with Herman Kane. They're going to have to deal with Herman Kane. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. We'll see. A new study confirms the importance of a high-fiber diet. According to the American Heart Association, people who eat a diet high in fiber when they're young are less likely to have heart problems later in life. Fiber helps uh, lower blood pressure, of course, and decreases the rates of obesity and high cholesterol. 
Foods like broccoli, beans, and whole grain bread are considered fiber-rich foods, Pat. Thank you very much. I just had a birthday. You did yesterday. What I'm, are you, like I'm, 54 I'm, now? What yeah, are you? I'm counting down. I've only got, uh, let's see, 18 years and about 360 60. days, 64, 64 days, days. days left to get 100. Hey, that's a good strategy, Every brother. Every day I'm counting down to go to 100. Then I got to go to 120. Well, you do what you got to do. Yeah. So does that mean you're going to be 120 years of harassing me? Yes. It'll, it'll be there in your, <laughs> your nightmare. You'll wake up and say, oh, no, why doesn't he die? Well, I have a question for you. Since yesterday <laughs> was <laughs> why you I would not say that back. But I will say this. What's yesterday that? was your birthday. Did you bring me some cake? I thought you got cake when we were here. Yeah, but you can never have enough. Yes, you can. It's thin and <laughs> svelte as you are. Svelte. Good answer. Well, you know what else is good? Just like that story. Awesome. Fiber is good, too. But speaking of what's not good, I got to tell you, if you have a teenager, know a teenager, you got to watch this next story. Up next, a high school that's actually making headlines. Why? For making babies. 90 Fraser High School students are currently pregnant or gave birth already. It's a number that shocked our newsroom. Our city leaders are working to shrink that number. That's right after this, so don't go away. Still ahead. As a football player, Jim Kelly lost four Super Bowls. As a father, he lost much more. I was angry. I was mad. I was mad at everybody. Didn't know who to push the blame to. Did you blame God? I don't know if... If it's to blame God, but really mad at God more than anything. Have you ever heard the expression, good as gold? Well, gold is on everybody's minds these days, and rightfully so, having risen in value dramatically since 2001. For years now, I've been singing the praises of one of the most recognized and trusted names in gold, Swiss America. They believe, like I do, that people need to know what's good about gold. Gold has withstood the test of time, and so has Swiss America. Now's the time to rediscover gold, because gold offers diversification, profit potential, and best of all, privacy. Call or visit online now and ask for the Pat Boone DVD, and they'll gladly rush out a copy, along with other information about getting gold into your nest egg. If you're gonna buy gold, buy it from a company you can trust. I did. And I've been a satisfied Swiss America customer for over 15 years. They are as good as gold. Call or log on right now. Tomorrow. I thought it would be for the greater good. He was the government's top shot. Their hitman for hire. I'm looking at someone and I'm going to take that person's life. This assassin had a dead eye. I was going to finish this. See what happened when he blinked. I can still see some of those images today. Memphis, Tennessee, home of Elvis Presley. Can you believe it that the teen pregnancy rate in that city is twice the national average? What are they doing there? Was Ephraim Graham reports that crisis as politicians turning to church leaders for answers. Memphis, Tennessee is known for the blues, barbecue, and Beale Street. But its latest buzz is babies having babies. 90 Fraser High School students are currently pregnant or gave birth already. It's a number that shocked our newsroom. Much of the focus is here at Fraser, a high school in the struggling Fraser community where 20% of female students are pregnant or have already had a baby. Some girls try to do it because they think it's cute. Some be an accident. I never thought I was going to get pregnant. I never thought that. I was like, oh, like, oops. <laughs> 90 pregnancies at one Memphis high school made the city front page news across the nation for several days. But it wasn't news at all for those who actually live here. It was just the latest reminder of an old reality. Others were just finally seeing it. I think people should not have been shocked. Dr. Kenneth Robinson is Tennessee's former commissioner of health and a Memphis pastor. We are a predominantly African-American city. Uh, the teenage pregnancy rates are twice as high for African-American teenagers as they are for their white uh, counterparts. 
Uh, this is not news for us in Memphis Shelby County. What is new is the half million dollar media campaign encouraging girls to say no to sex. And beyond the billboards, city and church leaders are working together on the next step. We want to protect them from unsafe sex and the sexually transmitted diseases and pregnancy. So we have to talk about, even in the faith community, family planning and appropriate applied approaches in communities such as ours when young people don't make the first choice we want them to make. This community has a lot of issues, a lot of issues, a lot of gang issues, uh, a lot of teenage pregnancy issues. Marin Thomas heads up a Christian community center that has been working with Frazier's young people for more than a dozen years. Its mission, train girls and boys to be Christian leaders who say no to gangs, drugs and sex. They're saying no because my body is the temple of the Lord and we're saying no because we love Jesus Christ. So we want to get our hands on more of our kids so we can teach them what to say yes to. Thomas's center is called Youth Visions with good reason. Letting them see something different and if they see something different, a lot of times we've seen our kids become something different. Showing teenage girls something different is why this busy mom is helping tackle the city's teen pregnancy problem. God gave me this story and I have to share it, you know. There are a lot of girls who are dealing with the same thing or worse. Summer Owens was pregnant her sophomore year of high school. She was raped by someone who was visiting her cousin's home. It was Summer's 15th birthday. We started fooling around just a little bit and he took it further. And when I asked him to stop and I tried to push him off of me, he wouldn't. Um, and it was over before I knew it. And then I, four weeks later, found out that I was pregnant. It was a shock that had the 15-year-old contemplating an abortion. She shares her emotional story in a new book, Life After Birth, a memoir of survival and success as a teenage mother. It's like, I can't. I'm, I'm the good girl. I want to go to college. I want to get married. I want to have a family. That way I want to do everything right. This is messing up my perfect little picture. I can't do this. Um, I really did. I, I, at that time, I thought that that was the answer. I was tormented. Um, and my heart and my faith didn't agree with abortion. Today, Summer is a successful marketing executive who beat the odds. She graduated from high school, college, and business school with honors while raising her now 16-year-old son on her own. I love him to death, and he knows I do, and I wouldn't trade him for the world, but I would be much more grateful to have had a husband and then him and had my family, you know, as God intended it. The Memphis school system is putting Summer's book in the hands of students in hopes it will inspire them to make wise choices. I show them just as being, you know, a living, breathing example that it's possible. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Memphis, Tennessee. Thanks, Ephraim. I was uh, with uh, a gentleman who'd been working with some people in the African American community, and he said he was, you know, counseling these girls. He, he was a, you know, a physician or a pastor. And one of them said, you know, uh, doctor, uh, it's time that I get busy and help my family. And he said, well, that's very commendable. Well, what do you want to do? He said, well, I've got to start having babies uh, so that we can get welfare checks. And uh, it was just an accepted thing to do in those days. And I, that wasn't very long ago here in the community where we are, not Memphis, but in, in uh, Norfolk. Yeah. Uh, but it was kind of like uh, I'm expected to go and help my family by getting a welfare check. And as I recall, it was about... What is it, $90 a month, $70 a month? It's, it's a pretty good check. Well, I think that might be one perspective, but I think another thing that we need to deal with, there are so many people who, who want to focus on uh, abstinence or both birth control mm -hmm. or issues like that. I think if we can take it to a level deeper and, and just show these women where their significance really lies in, mm -hmm. because it's kind of like, okay, if a boy, if I do this, then he'll love me. If I do this, then maybe I'll be loved by a baby, and that's unconditional love. I mean, I think that could be more of the root issue than just saying, mm -hmm just don't have sex. So I think that's something that we need to explore. You think these girls aren't loved at home? Is that the problem? No, I just think that, um, you know, as a teenager, there are so many different issues that you mm. go through that I think 
you might get boy crazy and say, if I do this, he'll love me. Or I've heard girls say, you know, maybe this is going on or that's going on, but a baby will always love me. Mm. And so you just never know what the situation is. But well, the, the, I, um, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, molestation of, of teenagers comes from family members. They're either brothers, uncles, cousins, yeah. or fathers or stepfathers. Sure. There's just so many variables, uh, yeah. Pat. I guess the biggest thing is, I don't know, I look at that high school, 90 girls in one high school, it just hurts my heart. And the fact that they're African Americans, I want to go to that school and just talk to them and love on them and tell them about really the love of the Lord and we'll how he can there. help them. You ready to go? I'll go. Come on. All right. Give me a plane ticket. Okay. All right. Here you go. Well, up next, one out of every 100,000 children are born with Crabe disease. And for the Kelly family, that one was their son. She's telling us there's no treatment, there's no cure. Your son probably will not live to see his second birthday. Hear the lesson this family learned from a boy who never spoke a word. Losing weight for a reunion, a vacation, a wedding. I know just how you feel. I lost 50 pounds for my wedding and I did it with Jenny Craig. I tried everything, but I realized I needed a program that was personalized to me and my body. And that's why Jenny Craig worked. Well, that and I had my personal consultant who really stood by me. Now lose 20 pounds for $20 plus the cost of food. Call 1-800-JENNY-20. So when you're finally ready to shed those pounds, call Jenny. It's the personalized way to lose weight. Attention investors, now is the time to protect your retirement accounts and investments. Excessive government spending is devaluing the U.S. dollar and high rates of inflation are coming. Gold has tripled since 2001 and some experts predict the prices will climb another 100%. Buy gold now, direct and wholesale with United Gold Group. The demand for gold around the world is higher than ever. Foreign countries like China and India are buying up gold at record rates. Why? What do they know that you don't? Call now and get your Gold Investors Kit absolutely free. Call in the next five minutes and receive the secret to owning gold in your retirement account, also absolutely free. Just call 1-800-758-5070. That's 1-800-758-5070. This could be the most important call you make this year. United Gold Group, investing in America's future. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to CBN.com. Quarterback Jim Kelly knows what it's like to run onto the field before the big game. There's only one feeling that's better, getting to run out onto the field with his own son. Toughness, perseverance, Two words that describe former NFL quarterback Jim Kelly. In his 11 seasons with the Buffalo Bills, number 12 took his team to four consecutive Super Bowls. By the time Jim retired in 97, he was married, had a two-year-old daughter, and a baby on the way, this time a boy. A little fact his wife Jill kept secret. You held back. Yes. But you didn't tell him you wanted it to be a surprise. You knew it was a boy. I cannot even believe I kept that secret, and I was so happy. On February 14th, Jim's birthday, Hunter James Kelly was born. And I was a coach. I was right there, and uh, I saw the little boy, you know, being born right in front of my eyes. And the excitement, um, words cannot describe it really seriously, because I was already in the backyard, show him how to grip the football, show him how to throw a curveball. The look on his face, the excitement, the tone of his voice, the shout of cheer, he was, I had never seen him that happy, ever. But Jill ever. had other hopes. Since their marriage, the couple had begun drifting apart. I was at home taking care of our youngest, and I was very focused on her care, so I was being mommy. And Jim was carrying on working for ESPN and NBC and all those things, and he was always away. So there was an element of distrust there on my part because I was wondering, well, what is he doing and where is he? And I really thought that once he gets this boy that maybe he'll be home more and maybe he'll look at me even with more love in his eyes. 
But when Hunter was barely two weeks old, he became irritable and had trouble eating. It took three months and numerous doctor visits to find out why. So you met with a neurologist, and she announces to you that Hunter has Crabbe leukodystrophy, a disease you've never even heard of. She's telling us there's no treatment, there's no cure. Your son probably will not live to see his second birthday. They learned that Crabbe leukodystrophy is a fatal genetic disease that affects the central nervous system. Well, it was, it's very hard to put words to the wave of devastation that goes through you as a parent when you're given that diagnosis. I was, um, I was angry. I was mad. I was mad at everybody. Didn't know who to push the blame to. Did you blame God? I don't know if, if it's to blame God, but really mad at God more than anything. Hunter would need 24-hour care for the rest of his life. There was a definitely a shroud of darkness for the first year and a half of his life in our household. Jill loved her son deeply, but after a year of watching him suffer and struggling with her marriage, she reached out to God. I just wanted heaven so bad for selfish reasons because I thought if my son Hunter is going there, I want to go there. So I was seeking after this God with all that was in me. I needed hope. I needed heaven. And I was so afraid to lose my son. Every day I lived with that fear that it could be the day. And that was very hard. Jill went to her aunt and uncle for help. And I remember them saying, Jill, you need Jesus. And God knows what you need. And I prayed with them. And I know in those moments that God took all that I was giving, which I felt at the time was everything I had. And he saved me. And Everything changed. It was then they learned to treat Hunter as someone who was living, not dying. And then he did reach his second birthday and his third and his fourth and his fifth. And eventually, because God taught us how to treat him like he was living because he was, because God had still given him life and breath, we all started living. Although physically disabled, Hunter was fully cognizant. Everyone, including Hunter's sisters, Aaron and Cameron, helped with his care. Of course, Jim shared with Hunter his love for football. I said, Hunter, we're going to watch some exciting games. We're going to watch when Daddy played. So I'd bring up all of the games that uh, I played, and we'd watch those together. Hunter defied the odds and lived long enough to see two of his dad's proudest moments. The first was when the Buffalo Bills retired Jim's number. And all of us were there together. And I knew that Hunter was going to walk out onto the field that Jim had walked out onto for so many years and all the fans and just the, the electricity and the excitement of what that means. Hunter was also at Jim's induction to the NFL Hall of Fame. It has been written throughout my career that toughness is my trademark. Well, the toughest person I've ever met in my life is my hero, my soldier, my son, Hunter, I love you, buddy. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Buffalo. And God bless. Despite the good times, their marriage was still strained. Hunter was the linchpin that kept them together. Then on August 5th, 2005, Hunter, who was now eight and a half, stopped breathing. He was rushed to the emergency room and given continuous CPR. The only thing that kept coming out of my mouth was, no, no, God, no. I started to pray with him, and I was talking to him and saying, Mommy's here, Mommy's here, you're going to be okay. Then finally, yeah, Jill right. realized that Hunter was gone. And I looked up at the first nurse that I saw, and I said, I need you to stop. You have to stop. And they did. And that was it. And that was horrible. Jim arrived moments later. I was met by a couple of doctors who said, we're sorry, your son is gone. And I didn't have that opportunity to say bye to him, but I get to spend many minutes with him after by myself talking to him. And I do not think we said too much to each other on the way home. And that's when it really hit rock bottom. Jill, seek God, I went further away. 
With Hunter gone, they moved closer to divorce. They started marriage counseling with Jill's pastor, but it wasn't until Jill's mother confronted Jim about his behavior that he realized he could lose everything. The ultimate was knowing that if I wanted to see my son again, if I wanted to come home and look at my two daughters in the eye with respect and love my wife the way I should have to begin with, I was gonna have to change my ways. Jim went to his pastor and surrendered his life to Christ. Afterwards, he made a confession to Jill. I told her that I wasn't happy with, you know, the way I was acting, that, um, that I wasn't faithful, and that I needed to change my ways. I said, I can't go on living like this. After I confessed, after I asked for forgiveness, it was like a huge weight lifted off me, and I was free. It was like, it's hard to explain unless you've been there. And when he said, I just, he goes, I don't even know how to explain this. He goes, I feel free. I feel free. And those whom the Son has set free are free indeed. So it was just a crazy day of emotion, all wrapped up into the fact that God had saved Jim. He would captured his heart and that neither of us were going to be the same, that now our marriage was going to be different because that alone was going to, God alone was going to be the linchpin now that was going to hold us together instead of Hunter. Jill wrote about their journey in Without a Word, how a boy's unspoken love changed everything. One thing that keeps Jim busy is Hunter's Hope, a foundation the Kelly started to raise awareness about crab A disease. Jim also plans for the day he's reunited with his son. Probably more than anything is just to hold him. Hold them the way that daddies and sons hold each other, the hug, the embrace. And then what I was taught as a kid growing up, how to give a good, firm handshake. That's what I want my son to be able to do. God is able to do the impossible. He did it. We're living proof of that. And he did this through a little boy who suffered and never spoke a word. God used our one and only son, Hunter's suffering, to bring us to his one and only son, Jesus, and his suffering that has made all the difference. And that's awesome. <laughs> what have you been through? You know, the Jim Kelly, the love he has for that little boy was just extraordinary. He wants to actually go to heaven so he can hold his son and <clears throat> hug him the way a dad hugs a little boy. Wonderful father he wasn't living the way he should. And there are many people, you've got troubles. You've got troubles at home. And you may have an afflicted child, and instead of it bringing you together, it's driving you apart because you, you just are so concerned about this. You're not concerned about each other, and, and you, you begin to get snappy and sharp, and then you start yelling at each other. And then next thing you know, one, somebody walks out the door, and it's all over. Um, it shouldn't be that way. God Almighty can bring you together, and Jesus can hold you. And if there's a, somebody who's sick, he'll bring healing. He'll give you strength to go through trials. Though you walk through the fire, it won't burn you. Though you go through the waters, they won't overflood you. Wherever you are, God Almighty, the God of the Bible, will be with you. Now, right now, if you want to have peace in your heart, if you want to have strength in your marriage, strength in your home, why don't you let Jesus take over? Because He's in charge. He is the most wonderful being in all the universe. There's nobody like Jesus. Pray with me right now. If you like Him, just bow your head wherever you are, husbands and wives, just take each other by the hand. And bow your head and pray these words. Jesus, that's right, Jesus. You know the trials that I've been going through. You know the problems in my life. You know the yearning in my heart. You know the failings that I have as a person. You know everything about me. And so, Lord, I bring to you my weakness, and I ask that you might Consume it in your strength. I want you to be my Savior. I need you, Lord. 
I need something bigger than me. And I turn to you and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, live your life in me. And from this moment on, I am yours. Thank you, Lord, that you've heard my prayer. Thank you that you've come into my heart. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to, that little thing for you, someplace really. Uh, uh, it's called, here it is right now. It's called A New Day, and it's available to you. And you can say, I prayed with Pat. This will get you started and tell you what you do. There's so much hope in the Lord. You can confide in Him. Listen, He's the best friend you'll ever have. And you can talk to Him. He's not some unapproachable deity way up in the sky. He's actually within you if you come to Him. And you can talk to Him. And you can tell Him your failings. You can tell Him your problems. You can ask for His forgiveness. You can ask for His strength. Just talk to Him. Talk to Him, just like I'm talking to you. Talk to Him, because He loves you. And if you prayed with me, I want you to talk to one of our counselors. Just tell them what you've done, because you need to get this out of you. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has saved him, has raised him from the dead, you, I'll be saved. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. So pick up the phone, call in 1-800-759-0700. Somebody's here who loves and cares about you. And by the way, um, Jill Kelly, beautiful girl, with that extraordinarily talented husband of hers, has written a book about this mm -hmm. little boy's life, how it changed them, and it's called Without a Word. Mm. You were moved by that testimony. I tell you, it moved my heart on so many levels. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, as a parent, and you, yeah. and you, and you have expectations for your child, and, and then that child ends up teaching you something that you don't yeah. expect, everything from the restoration of the marriage. I tell you what, that was beautiful ministry, Pat. It was beautiful. Without a word, folks, yeah. that's the name of the book. Jill Kelly is available where books are sold. We'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Yeah. Got a question for Pat? Send us yours now on CBN.com. We'll bring it online with your questions from our live chat room later on today's 700 Club. Do you take fish oil? There's an omega-3 supplement that's better than regular fish oil. Staying healthy, it's not easy. I exercise regularly and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I used to take a fish oil supplement too, but then I discovered something better than regular fish oil. Arctic Wonder Omega-3 Krill Oil. It's from the makers of One A Day, so I know I can trust it. The omega-3s in Arctic Wonder both support heart health and are scientifically proven to be better absorbed than regular fish oil. You'd have to take six of these fish oil soft gels to get the strength of just two Arctic Wonder soft gels. The Arctic Wonder does not have an aftertaste. They go down real easy. Arctic Wonder isn't just good for your heart. It also supports healthy brain function and a healthy immune system. This is one of the products that I plan to take for the rest of my life. Arctic Wonder is from One A Day and not available in stores. For a special trial offer, call or go online now. Call 1-800-409-7339. That's 1-800-409-7339. Or go online to tryarcticwonder.com now. Welcome back to the 700 Club. The governor of South Dakota has signed a new law requiring women to wait three days before having an abortion. That's the longest waiting period in America. The law also requires women to undergo counseling at a pregnancy center that discourages abortion. Opponents plan to file a lawsuit challenging the measure. Governor Dennis Daugard promised to defend the new law in court, though. He even has a private sponsor to pay the state's legal fees. A Florida judge says he's using Islamic law to decide a case. That case is between a mosque and several men who say they were fired wrongfully as the trustees of the mosque. The St. Petersburg Times reports those men got an Islamic scholar to rule in their favor, and they want Florida's courts now to uphold that ruling. Now Hillsborough County Circuit George, uh, Judge Richard Nielsen has agreed to see if leaders of the mosque correctly followed the Quran in their decision. Nielsen writes, this case will proceed under ecclesiastical Islamic law. Several Florida lawmakers, though, have introduced legislation to keep Islamic, or Sharia law as it's called, from being used in Florida's courts. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. 
Pat and Christy will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. I was in a lot of pain. I remember feeling, I don't want to have cancer. Why is this happening? I went to pray with my 10-year-old. He said that he wished he had two hearts because one of them was breaking. I had to reassure her a lot that I'm going to be okay. Things are going to be all right. You know, God's on our side. This is one thing that Cancer Treatment Center does for people. They give them the courage and the strength to battle cancer. When you first walk in that building, you almost feel like there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is about the patient. It is only about the patient and what is it that they need and what do they want. Call now and we'll send you this free DVD that shows you how our very special team of experts and caregivers put you at the center of everything we do. Hope is alive at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't really see how anyone can get through a life-threatening disease without the Lord in their life. He gives us the strength that we need to carry on. Angela Kaufman was $89,000 in debt. Well, today, she's debt-free. So how'd she do it? One dollar at a time. Angela, thank you so much for coming to the 700 Club. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, the first question is, $80,000 plus, $1,000, almost $100,000 in debt, and now you're debt-free. First of all, um, what did you do? To get well, debt free. We started out by slashing our household expenses. Yeah. And then we sold everything that wasn't nailed down. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Like some of the things such as? Um, well, of course, one of the main things we cut was groceries. But another thing that we cut was our household cleaning items. Hmm. We found out we were able to make a lot of the same things at home for just pennies. OK, so let's start this thing. We've got some great examples. I have my cheat sheets here. So let's start with Clorox. Just when. Or, rather normal all-purpose cleaner. Right. Um, it normally, if I went to the store, it would retail at almost $4, $3.99. Mm -hmm. But you say that you can do it for just pennies. Right, this yeah. will actually cost less than um, 60 cents. Yeah. And all it is is two cups of water. Mm -hmm. If you start warm water, everything dissolves better. Gotcha. And then we just have two teaspoons of borax for disinfecting, a fourth of a cup of white vinegar. Okay and a fourth of a cup of liquid Castile soap. And then I like to add some food coloring so it doesn't look like water, so we know yeah. that it's something. Oh, that's a good idea. Plus, I think it's psychological, too. Yeah. If things are blue or if they're the colors that it is when you buy it in the store, then it makes it look like it's Right, and just a real, little real. shake, and you're yeah. good to go. So. And so with that, you can clean what? I clean countertops, mm. any kind of hard surface. Gotcha. It's great. Yeah. Now, I see that you were with child. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that was one of your motivations for why you even, you know, came up with a lot of these different ideas. Because it was. Of, this tell is, me. This is our sixth baby, okay. and so I need help at home, and my children are eager workers, and I wanted products that they could use that was safe for them. Exactly. And so this is all organic and safe, and so and all of our products here are. So. I just love the fact that you're making your kids clean. God bless you, sister. <laughs> All right, so windows. A lot of people don't do windows, but the moms in this audience, we do windows. So what makes windows um, not cost like $4 at the store? Window okay. cleaner. Okay, yeah, this is actually less than a penny. Okay. And all it is is four cups of water. This is less than a penny. Tell me, I just thought about that. Yeah. Why is it less than a penny? Well, you do have to buy the whole jar of Joy, which <clears throat> costs about a dollar, but then okay. you only use four drops. Okay. And you could use it over and over and over again. So right. by the time so, you break it down, it's less than a penny. I, exactly. So how, um, I mean, this will last a lifetime. If Does that's it have how to be use. Joy, by the way? Joy works the best, but okay. you can use any. It's just you don't want a lot of soap. The less you have, the better. Because too much will cause streaking. Gotcha. And then I'm used to my window cleaner being blue. So you have to put the blue so in there. So we'll add a blue. Okay. Good to know. Shake and bake it and then you've got it. And it's good to go. Okay, so Angela, dishwasher detergent. Yes. That can cost big money. It can. Yeah, so there's another way that we can cut the cost on that one as well. What okay. can we do? Okay, this one is really simple. Mm -hmm. It's just one cup of plain table salt. Gotcha two cups of borax, and two cups of regular household baking soda. Gotcha. And mix this up. And how much do you need? You use two tablespoons in the powder um, dispenser of your dishwasher, and then you can put plain white vinegar in the 
spot for you. Yeah. I was going to ask yeah. you about the spots because that's the thing. I'm like, I'm sure this is going to clean the dishes, but the girl, the spots drives me batty. Well, vinegar will help, and it just depends on your water. Most people don't have any trouble with spots, and if you do, it just could be the type of water that's going through okay. your system. Okay, so. good to know. All right, so let's head over here. Now let's talk about furniture cleanser cleaners, like uh, Pledge, for example. Right. Yeah. You have an example of how we could take that cost from, what, say, almost four dollars, even five dollars if you buy the big one. Right. To, to just four cents. cents. To four cents. That's right. crazy. So you tell me and I'll do this. Okay, this is just water. Okay. Two cups of water and one cup of white vinegar. Okay. And now, then I like to add essential oil for scents because, you know, usually you have a lemony yeah. scent or a citrus scent. This one's grapefruit extract. Grapefruit. And it also do, is a wood conditioner at the same time. Oh, lovely. And if you do have really dry wood, you can add a teaspoon of olive oil to this as well. You'll just want to shake real good before you use it. That smells delicious. I love it. I know. Well, you know, I, I've noticed that we've used a lot of vinegar, and that's probably one of my number one challenges is that I hate the smell of vinegar. Right. And it's like you don't want your house to smell like vinegar. Usually the vinegar smell goes away, but you can cover it with essential oils too. Okay, good to know. Pledge. All right. If we just... <laughs> Maybe we should, there we go. Yeah. Fabulous, with the wonderful towels. That's right. Look at there me cleaning, go. look at me cleaning. It's documented, I clean. All right. <laughs> <laughs> People don't believe I do. All right, what's next? We have soft scrub. Oh my goodness, especially when it comes to like cleaning tubs and showers and things right. of that sort. So what alternative do you have for you, the normal soft scrub out there? You can mix this up as you need it, or if you want to mix it up and store it in a jar, you can. Okay. It's oh. just two parts of baking soda. So okay. right now we have half a cup. All right. To one part of regular dish soap, so that's a fourth of a cup, okay. just like what you'd use for hand dishes. Okay. And you want to mix it up till it looks like frosting. Really? And then you just use it and scrub it like it was soft scrub. And one of the best things it cleans is baked on grease. You can use it on dishes or even your oven, and it won't it scratch. It does look like frosting. Y'all yeah, see that? Yeah, don't eat it. <laughs> oh, I <know. laughs> oh, I love that. And that cleans too. Yeah, it's fantastic. So I can like put that right there. Yeah. And I could scrub. Look at that. You see that shine? Uh, is that bad? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Let's do the next thing. I briefly mentioned showers over here, but technically the best way to clean showers would be um, with a tub and shower cleaner, right. not necessarily soft scrub. You can scrub. do that, but yeah, you okay. can do this too if you prefer a spray. Okay. And we're back to vinegar here. All There's right. less vinegar than in our dusting spray because we don't want to dissolve any grout because vinegar actually will dissolve your hard water deposits and your soap scum. Okay. So it's just two cups of water to a fourth of a cup of vinegar. Okay. It's it doesn't matter what kind, I don't mean to interrupt, it doesn't matter what kind of vinegar, like sometimes if there's like apple cider vinegar or other kind of vinegar. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In fact, I like to soak my vinegar in orange peels and get that nice Who orange Who does scent that? Of, you yeah. do that? Yeah, we eat the orange and just throw them in the jar. You're so vinegar. earthy, I love that. <laughs> I love, okay, now what am I holding? I don't this even know. red food coloring. Okay. Just so that you can remember that this is not water. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's smart. And then um, just shake and bake this yeah. up too. And if the vinegar smell bothers you, you can add essential oil to this too. Peppermint is really nice. Okay, now you know how we were talking like this is the shower cleaner? I have a white tile shower uh -huh. and it gets um, like moldy and black. It's, it's just hard to clean. Right. So can I like maybe spray a little there and then do this on yes, the bottom part absolutely. so I can mix it? Absolutely, yeah. Angela, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate you. Great, great, great ideas. Listen, if you want to make your own household cleaners, all you have to do is just head over to our website. Uh, we have a free fact sheet for you with a lot of Angela's recipes. So where do you need to go? You need to go to CBN.com to get all of that. And don't forget, Angela also has an e-book called The Grocery Shrink. And Good title, by the way. And uh, that's also available on our website, which you can check all this information and great recipes on. Well, thank you so much again. And thank don't you. forget, we'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today.
Well, we are back with the 700 Club, and can I tell you, some of those tips are wonderful. All right, here we go. You ready, Pat, for Bring It On? All right. We're going to do the Bring It On line. So this is what is so cool about this segment is that people throughout the entire show have been logging okay. on to CVN.com, asking Pat whatever. And so we're going to start with Millie. And Millie writes and she says, I never hear stories about seniors being healed of Alzheimer's disease. Ooh, that's a good question. Are there some illnesses that God can't heal? And if not, why don't I see people healed of Alzheimer's? Good I, question. I don't know. I don't know if we've got enough faith for that. But the truth is that they can be faith. They're, they're uh, amyloid plaques in the brain. And there's nothing that says that God can't dissolve them mm -hmm. and bring clarity. I'm, I think there have been people healed of Alzheimer's. God can heal anything. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we don't have it on this show. I, I'm sorry, but... Um, yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. I guess that's going to be one of the uh, stories that we'll have to look for. I know. You know I know. It's, it's... I don't know what, what is causing all this. I don't know whether it's chemicals in the air or what it is. But all right, what's next? Yeah, next question. Here's a question or a comment. Or question from Emerald. She says, I'm disappointed that you support drilling for natural gas. It's environmentally destructive. Why not support going green for our energy woes? Oh, dear heart, there ain't anything green that's going to take care of your car and the oil, uh, I mean, the, the, the plants. Uh, there's nothing wrong with drilling for natural gas. It's not going to hurt your environment. Uh, there's some possibilities that... Uh, uh, if they put too much water into a frack, it might uh, pollute the wells, but so far they haven't had any evidence that I know of about that. There is nothing green that'll do it. Uh, ethanol is a joke. Uh, wind farms are a joke. Solar is a joke. There is no way that the great energy needs of this huge country can be met by wind, solar, or whatever else you got's green. It just won't happen. I mean, that's just the reality of things. So what have we got? I like nuclear, but now nuclear is having a problem over there in Japan. But uh, I think we can make safe nuclear, and we've got to do it. I hope one day we can get to solar fusion, which is the power of the sun, and would, uh, to have everybody in the world have uh, abundant supplies of energy would be marvelous. But so far, they haven't gotten something. But we, we need a crash program. What are we going to do? Natural gas is the answer. So, I mean, I, I'm sorry. The, the environmentalists, I, I knew a guy who wrote a book. He was a big talker. And I was intrigued by what he had to say. But when it was finally boiled down, he got on this program and he said that he would be happy to see about four or five billion people in the world die. Yeah, because the stuff he was proposing would not take care of the population on Earth. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, really? Yeah, bad, huh? So he. I, well, I hope we never had him as a guest again. <laughs> no way. But he, he was into windmills and all this stuff, you know. But yeah. I mean, there was nothing. That he was talking about, uh, uh, you know, teleology, the, the, the diminishing power of, of uh, uh, the, the universe that we've got it, and that uh, things, systems were running down, and that the world was going to crash, and that we. We couldn't sustain the population we have and so forth. Wow. So, but I mean, he represents the extreme wing of this environmental group. We leave you with these words from Psalm 69. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. We'll see you tomorrow. Come on.